Uh, this is our final speaker in the first uh, session, uh, Dr. Panagiotis uh, <coughs> Thesaurus. Uh, so Panos, as uh, people call him, uh, he's the professor in the School of Aerospace Engineering and, uh, in Georgia Tech, and he's also the uh, associate director for the Institute for Robotics and Intelligence Machines. Uh, he's a fellow of the AIAA, which is the American Institute for Aeronautics and Astronomics, and he's a senior member of IEEE. He's also the current chief editor of the Frontier in Robotics and AI Journal, uh, which is in the area of space robotics. And Panos is also involved in autonomous racing in the Auto Rally Project at Georgia Tech, if folks have seen those very impressive drifting videos. So his research interests include nonlinear and optimal control and the connections with, with artificial intelligence, which is the perfect fit for the theme of this workshop. So Panos, over to you, and we are curious to learn more about the fast and furious control that you are doing. All right, thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Let me see if I can share. Give me a second. Yeah, and if you have videos, Panos, just click the optimize for video. Check. Where is uh, where is that? It's where at the bottom it? of the screen share prompt. There should be a button which says optimize for video. Ah, yeah. Okay, I see that. Okay, let me see if you can. Uh, let me see that. Let me see if you can. Oh, so you can see my screen, I suppose. Yeah, we can see that. Yeah, All right. Um, thank you uh, very much. I think this is a nice workshop. This is actually. I'm very excited about this because I've been working on these types of problems for like almost yeah, more than 10, 15 years now. So I decided to give a talk that is a little bit different, I hope, uh, than the, the rest of the talks that we're going to uh, see today, uh, because this is going to be primarily focused on off-road car racing. And if you see the title, I added off-road to make it more specific, uh, which is something we have been um, investigating for many years and I explain why this is a little bit different. Uh, there's some similarities, but also some differences between uh, off-road car racing and um, regular racing on, on a track. So let me uh, show you a little bit some videos of that I actually several years ago motivated my work in this area. I was interested in driving fast and uh, I was interested in driving uh, in unstructured environments. And if you see these videos, um, it's pretty impressive what these drivers do. Um, they drive at the limits of the performance and the vehicle um, skids, slides. Uh, there is nothing about non-holonomicity here, right? The vehicles have very high seats, they slip, uh, high, high uh, slip angles. Uh, it's, uh, and it was curious for me, how is it possible for these guys uh, to drive this? Or is it possible to maybe learn some of these drivers to drive these vehicles? Uh, on 100 miles per hour on gravel and ice. I mean, it's, uh, it's mind boggling how they can do that. So we started investigating that. And the first thing I realized there was nothing really much at that time. That was actually, uh, you know, early 2000s. So I'm going to start looking at this problem and we start looking at the frictions um, investigation. And there was nothing really at the time about how to control vehicles when they're skidding and, and stuff like that. So, um, so that got me to the, you know, discussion of uh, or, or a certain investigation of uh, friction and stuff like that. And I would like to investigate actually to, sorry, I would like to, to mention a couple of things about friction that when you deal with these types of problems, and I think it was mentioned already in a couple of previous slides, uh, sorry, talks, uh, that um, if you want to work in this area, uh, you cannot use linearized friction models. It's not going to work. Uh, uh, basically, uh, you have to, um, uh, to have a coupling between the longitudinal and the lateral dynamics of the vehicle and this is what is called the friction circle that basically uh, does this and it's easy to see uh, it was mentioned in one of the previous talks about the gg diagram which is actually uh, tells you the uh, longitudinal with the lateral acceleration and it's easy to see how the average driver uh, has a gg diagram that is kind of like either longitudinal or the lateral is not doesn't cover much of the area where an expert driver they operate you know, in this area, which is actually the coupling. And the closer you operate at the, at the boundary, the faster you can get, uh, because that's when the torque um, becomes force. But it turns out that actually the boundary is kind of a, an unstable equilibrium. So when you start investigating these types of behavior, you have enormous respect about these uh, race drivers and what they do. And then you realize that uh, the reason they get millions of dollars is it's worth it. I mean, they, they, they deserve it. There's very few people can do stuff like that. 
So, um, all right, so then um, one thing we want to do, so I actually is to investigate this. And uh, so we start in uh, including actually all the earlier work is if you actually include the friction circle, uh, essentially, you can even get away with very simple point mass models and you can get pretty good results. So actually, as long as you um, uh, have the friction model, here I show you some results that we have a long time ago that basically, even if you small, uh, simple models, friction models, uh, point mass model with a circle uh, friction can get you really good uh, lap times. So this is actually our simulator with very simple um, uh, the velocity generator along the track. So give me the track. This is a Silverstone circuit. And then basically you're just um, uh, doing a bang bang control more or less using the acceleration limit to describe in this paper. And you can see that we can actually get a pretty good, pretty good competitive uh, lap times uh, for this, uh, for this uh, uh, circuit. And then actually uh, for the, uh, these are three lap times that uh, we were, we had data for them. Uh, from pre pro professional drivers and this is optimizer was actually 82.7 of course actually the circuit still uh, for a regu regular one i mean the, it's still uh, hold by the schumacher for uh, the silver stone but may have he may have a better car than we did so when we're doing this simple simulation just to just to demonstrate that even with uh if you include the physics you can even get away with very very simple models so that's one part of the modeling by the way i want to mention that my talk is going to be I'll do a little bit of modeling then i'll show you some control design so the things that the second thing you want to understand about these types of uh, uh, regimes or, or driving is that uh, the importance of load transfer. The way uh, these drivers drive these cars, it's not the turn turn by turning the wheel, but the turning by braking. It's kind of interesting to, to know about this. Is uh, essentially they play a lot with the load transfer. So by braking and accelerating, they put more force on the front wheels or the less force on the back wheels. And then they're able to grab on the ground and make the vehicle turn. Uh, on loose surfaces, uh, whether you turn the wheel or not doesn't really matter. I mean, just basically the vehicle goes straight if it does not grip on the on the wheel. And the other thing they want to do is they want to very delicately um, uh, regulate the velocity of the speed. Uh, and the way to do that is basically use left foot braking. There's a technique they use to regulate very accurately the, the acceleration, which actually, uh, if you're driving cars, one of the things that you know uh, is this a known no, right? You never brake with the left foot. That in this type of competition, actually, you, uh, you do that in order to control the acceleration. This is a couple of techniques that uh, people use. So for us, was uh, the time was, uh, was it possible to take that into consideration and try to get something uh, that makes that work in a, some system, develop some controller that actually takes that uh, ideas and these techniques to consideration. So the next thing you know when you talk to these drivers is that they have specialized maneuvers. Uh, they actually have pre-programmed, so to speak, primitives in their, in their brain. And they have all techniques that will be used, uh, trail braking, Scandinavian flink, um, or pendulum um, uh, turn also. Uh, power over steer, uh, as I mentioned, left foot braking, et cetera, et cetera. So they use these types of technique, which makes, as a control engineer, uh, makes you realize that essentially there is a maneuver automaton that is running in the brains of these drivers, and they can actually switch from one maneuver to the other. So they actually have pre-programmed maneuvers in some sense, and they able to switch between uh, one maneuver to another maneuver and uh, generate uh, um, the whole track, okay? Um, so this is uh, a nice architecture because it allows you to basically try to learn a little bit one of these maneuvers or all of them, and then put them in a maneuver automaton and then figure out the switching hybrid architecture. So that's one way of doing it. And I think it's, the, at least this is the way the human uh, drivers are doing it. They, they know exactly what to do. And if you talk to them, uh, basically they say, yeah, I know that if I'm going with, I don't know, 60 miles per hour on this type of uh, dirt uh, and there's a 60 degree turn, then I'm going to use a pendulum turn or whatever. So they have already, they know what to do uh, in some sense. So um, so we started investigating two of these maneuvers and I'll explain a little bit uh, how we generated these types of maneuvers um, using some of these ideas. This is one of the trail braking maneuver, which is, sorry about that, give me a second. Uh, all right, so there was, um, uh, two maneuvers. Uh, one is the trail braking maneuver that is uh, used in order to um, save off excessive speed. Uh, 
Um, and then this is another one, school pendulum turn or Scandinavian flick, where it's typically it's a little bit more aggressive maneuver. And typically that goes when you connect the left and right turn. You will see some uh, some some simulations in a, in a while. And this is from a manual from um, a trail rally driver who actually teaches these things, these techniques to people who want to pay the money to do that. Um, and tells you, this is what you're going to do. You're going to be going with so much gas, so much, you know, turning the wheel, uh, et cetera, et cetera, for this type of numbers. If you do it right, um, this is what the vehicle is going to do. <laughs> that's what, actually, that's what we did. Uh, we had a professional driver to uh, teach us uh, how to do these maneuvers. Actually, uh, me, and, me and my student took some rally driving classes several years back. That's the team of uh, Neil Riley uh, School. He's a North American rally champion. And he will basically was telling us, oh, this is how you develop these maneuvers, right? So we did that and we basically get collected data. And for me, as an optimizer or trajectory optimizer, I want to collect this data and get a model so I can actually generate these maneuvers in, uh, in some optimization code. And lo and behold, it's not that difficult after you uh, realize that you have um, some kind of data to parameterize these maneuvers. There's uh, different ways that you can uh, uh, to parameterize the easiest thing to do it to actually have a uh, parameterize the uh, the time of the switching because we knew what type of um, inputs that we need to focus on to generate these maneuvers um, and then we just need to figure out when you're going to switch um, uh, the location you're going to switch and how much the the the, the, the magnitude of the of the input is going to be here. We had steering throttle and also had accelerator, sorry, braking that I don't, I didn't have time to put it here. So for these types of maneuvers, trail braking and pendulum turn, you can put it in an optimizer and doing some uh, optimization, you realize here is some uh, um, uh, maneuvers that you see the top is the um, uh, trail braking and the bottom is the uh, pendulum turn. Hopefully you can see that. And this is generated using the, uh, the car sim so it's pretty high fidelity uh, simulation and um, then um, then you basically uh, started investigating okay that was for um, a particular geometry i mean you can make a turn not but everything is um, you know 90 degrees some of them are 60 degrees some of them are 150 degrees whatever and you start making a lot of since you have a good model um, you can generate um, on the fly different optimal trajectories based on this optimizer and here's a couple of um, scenario here that you show a particular uh, trajectory and then you realize uh, by uh, plotting these trajectories uh, in this uh, polar diagram that um, because that was a conjecture at the time that essentially all these maneuvers at least the trail breaking maneuvers compose on three parts it's composed with an entry part there is a and then there is um, a, a middle steady state uh, b part where the vehicle um, goes in a so-called steady state um, uh, trajectory and then there is this an exit and depending on the uh on the angle that you want to make or the turn you want to make this b area could be larger or smaller so the a is primarily the same c is primarily the same but this changing essentially thing of extending the area of b if you want to make 90 degrees or 120 degrees or whatever <clears throat> so um at the, at, so this again uh, imposes um, the idea that you can have a nice architecture that you have a, a, an entry stage, then you have a, a steady state, and then you have a, an exit stage. Okay. So uh, the uh, so we started investigating. For we first we started by uh, uh, looking at the um, at the. Um, as I guess I'm repeating here, that basically is you have three areas. You have the first uh, entry stage, uh, which you hit a particular boundary condition. Then you follow a particular steady state in the middle, and then you have a stabilizing controller to exit. Now, uh, I just want to mention a few things here that the typically what you want to do is at the end of the middle stage, the vehicle in this area here, I don't know if you can see my cursor let me see if i can actually put a little laser pointer so in this area here which is kind of the uh, the middle area so at the end of that you want the vehicle to be already stabilized in the sense that you want the vehicle already to be looking at the exit so that's why in this area here you end up with high side slip angles so when you are inside the corner somewhere around there the vehicle has already turned 
and is looking at the exit. So at that point, you can hit the acceleration and you can actually maximize the exit velocity. That's kind of what the idea is. You want to maximize the exit velocity when you go through a corner, not necessarily taking the corner with minimum turn. This is a, one of the typical techniques. If you want to simulate, for example, uh, uh, do, uh, to do an optimizer to, to go fast, essentially you want to maximize the exit velocity from corners. In straight lines, you can minimize time, that's fine. So anyway, the way to do it is to basically start making the turn very quickly. And that's why you get generate high side slip angles and explain a little bit more about high slip, high slip angles. So that's uh, the, the architecture, at least for trail braking and a lot of other ones. So in the middle one, we need to find the steady states and then they have the stabilizing control at the exit, no big deal. So, um, so the first thing we did uh, was to uh, investigate uh, steady state coronary. Essentially, these are equilibria uh, of uh, constant radius, constant velocity, constant side slip angle, okay? And uh, find the corresponding um, steering wheel and forward uh, uh, forward force and uh, the, for the rear wheels and the front wheels and the rear wheels. Um, in this case, a forward drive. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It can be uh, any, any drive will work. Uh, you just change the equations a little bit, but uh, there is some equations you want to solve. It's not a big deal. And then you do that um, and you generate actually steady state equilibria. And here's a few of them. Um, it turns out that there are two types of equilibria. Uh, there is one with uh, small side slip angles, positive, and then the ones with a large side slip angle, negative here. So this is two types of equilibria that you get just by analyzing the equations of motion. And one of them is, is typically the one you want very often. This is called on counter steer. And if you have seen the movie Cars, you have seen the uh, one of the main characters, Doc Hatch on the old uh, uh, champion telling uh, um, uh, the uh, younger um, Lightning McQueen that he has to uh, going hard uh, basically on the left and you still, um, well, if you're going, if you find yourself going uh, left and you still, the, uh, it was on the other side and just confused why this would work, but that's what the physics tell you. Okay, this is also called steering by throttle, la large counter steering, large side slip angle, and it's typically a unstable equilibrium. All right, so you can generate that wheel, as you can see here with this car sim simulation, if you get the equations right. Okay, so you put everything together. Oh, by the way, there is one more thing that I want to mention, um, is that how, how you do the entry. Uh, the entry is to hit the initial boundary condition at the, at the beginning of the... Uh, of the side slip to the sorry of the uh, of the beginning of, of the uh, sorry of the, of the middle of the uh, steady state at the right side slip angle such that you're going to maintain the right side slip angle so you get the what you want uh, when you exit uh, the corner so the vehicle has the correct posture at the end and it turns out that the bicycle models as was mentioned earlier actually is going to work for these types of problems surprisingly it's a simple one i just need to include as i mentioned the load transfer and a non-linear saturation model and it turns out it's going to work um, it turns out the bicycle model is, is so-called differential flat model um, if you know what it is that's fine if you don't that's fine just they let you know that uh, uh, essentially means that uh, you can there are two variables uh, that you can keep track of and if you know these two variables then you can generate the control commands okay so it's a very nice property for nonlinear system not all nonlinear systems are differential flat but if they're flat you're lucky and this turns out to be a differential flat system so you can take that into consideration which means essentially that you can have a trajectory and you can track this trajectory in a particular way and you can hit the boundary condition I don't want to get into the details but basically use a differential flatness here to, in order to hit the, the right boundary condition at the entry or, or almost approximately uh, to hit the boundary condition at the entry. So here is uh, so a few minutes left. So let me show you some simulation. Put everything together. Uh, this is a car sim high fidelity simulation. All right. Um, and you see that the vehicle is start turning, hitting the boundary condition, start the steady state, goes the steady state, and then here stabilizing controller kicks in starts going on, accelerates, hits the boundary condition here, the right starts sliding at the steady state that we told it to slide at the particular side slip angle, and then accelerates, so you can do that forever going around there. All right, so that's for the uh, car sim simulation. Uh, uh, Georgia Tech, we have spent a lot of time in the last several years developing a platform. It's very difficult to do experiments with this uh, off-road vehicles because it's kind of dangerous. You don't want to have a vehicle uh, 
going 60 or 80 miles per hour on, on dirt or something and especially if it's autonomous so uh what we did is we uh developed this uh smaller platform it's not that small I mean, it's about um, a meter and a half uh but it's 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 good enough to be able to uh, to run it around a track to have a couple of tracks now um and uh if it's uh, hit itself it's fine we just uh, rebuild it all right but uh, hopefully there's no people around so um there's not going to be any accident so that was described in this uh, paper if you want to get more information uh but it's basically it's goes 60 miles per hour it's a as i mentioned about a meter uh, meter long and it's uh, it's a retrofitted uh small chassis and then we include this computer here that has um imu um basically gpu enabled computers and, and cameras etc cetera, etc cetera. all right so again if you want to learn more about this platform uh, you can google auto rally uh, georgia tech will pick it up i think in google should be the first hit uh so here is a couple of uh experiments uh for this uh, trail braking controller uh, on the old track now we have a larger one but you can see here just going uh, around the track um and we just basically recalculate uh, these trajectories every 20 milliseconds um so just uh right let's just go all right so that seems to be working fine um that's uh kind of summarizes uh, since uh i ran out of time um what i want to say about controlling these vehicles why would be interested in these types of problems first of all they're fun uh uh they're very challenging they are they're non-linear dynamics there's a lot of uncertainty there's saturation effects and also you have to take decisions fast time scales i mean it doesn't get more difficult than that when it goes to control design and also perception so this is a good problem to test and challenge your algorithms i would say that if you can deal if you find an algorithm a perception and a control and planning algorithm can solve this problem then uh, the other a lot of other problems are a piece of cake this is a really really difficult problem okay um so as I mentioned, in order to, especially for the off-road racing, we have especially uh, other things that you need to worry about. Uh, if you really want to model, these are two things that you need to pay attention to. Friction circle for sure, load transfer, uh, these two effects. And if you take that into consideration, most likely you're going to have a pretty good modeling. Uh, uh, in addition to the things that we're doing uh, as part of developing controllers and racing, uh, there's another reason why I was interested in that, and this is because it turns out that if you can control the vehicle and you can generate uh, large side slip angles, uh, you can this can lead to better uh, active control system for for passenger vehicles, and you can lead to better post uh, post collision mitigation strategies. In this case, you see the vehicle, the black vehicle, is turning before it hits the red one, uh, instead of ramming it as a T-bone collision. When this case will kill the driver, it's more likely that. Uh, um, people will survive, especially if you have side airbags. So I suppose when these uh, cases, you can make the vehicle turn, uh, very few people will be able to do that. But if you have an autonomous system that does this, that's a very advanced, let's say, um, control um, mitigation strategy. And then you need to understand a little bit about how the vehicles operate in these types of regimes. Um, and again, at the end, we need a lot of learning from professional race drivers. Uh, they, These guys have, uh, um, you know a lot of things about control these vehicles and um, it's uh, i think the more we talk to them I, at least uh, the more respect i have about um, the physics and about uh, what can be done with these types of regimes now this is actually an interesting paper we just published actually about a couple of months ago uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about what i mentioned today you can just uh, find this paper and has all the details or the or the math that i skipped so that's all uh, for me uh, and hopefully I'm on time so we can actually uh, spend time uh, chatting and uh, and asking, answering questions. Thank you very much. All right, yeah, thank you.